Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today is a very exciting day. We get to try out a developer preview of Android O, maybe 8.0, who knows, it still says 7.0 in the demo mode currently uh, when I tried it out. So uh, currently it is a developer preview, so more of an alpha than a beta. And a beta is set to come out, I think just about in a couple months, I think, two months. And uh, that is when I think it will come out through the Android beta program if you are enrolled in that. But in this case, this won't come out as part of the Android beta program. You'll need to flash this manually using things like Fastboot or Flashfire if you're into that. So I'm gonna be using Fastboot this time because I just recently did one using Flashfire. And because currently you can't root it anyways, I've tried using Magisk and SuperSU and uh, each have, I guess, one of them has failed to install or do some of its processes while the other one just says well, nothing really changes when you boot back into Android. So uh, we won't be rooting our device and I'll be showing you how to update your currently rooted phone or it doesn't have to be rooted. As long as you have an unlocked bootloader, you can flash this uh, Android O developer preview and um, hopefully I'll be able to show you how to do that if you are on a stock ROM to do so to update to O without actually wiping any data. But if you're coming from a custom ROM, you will need to boot into TWRP and wipe data before you reboot from the bootloader or the recovery. So this is how we are going to do it. We are going to, well, I'm going to be, use, be using Fastboot and we'll get started right away. So if we go over here, you'll probably need, you know, the platform tools installed. So that includes ADB and Fastboot. And I do have some guides in getting it set up here on three different operating systems. So this really is a universal tutorial. And if you already have Fastboot and you've used it before, which I'm willing to bet you have, otherwise you wouldn't have unlocked the bootloader you can pretty much uh, just use the same way as you did back there. But if you don't remember, you can follow these one of these videos here and that'll get you right on track and you'll be able to do pretty much exactly how I do it here. So yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind. You'll need Fastboot already on your computer somewhere or you can look at one of these videos. Then you'll also need the drivers installed, of course, and that should have been accompanied with you unlocking the bootloader in the first place. So right now, we'll need to download the respective O factory image or the system image they call it here. So this one will be for the Nexus 6P. Click on that and then check that you have read and that you agree to the terms and conditions. Click on this blue download link and just save it anywhere you like. I've already saved it to this folder. So once you have this downloaded and you have Fastboot and all that installed as well, you can now uh, extract some of the images here. So just a bit about my phone, it's currently on the N4F 26T build of Android 7.1.1. I also heard that the 7.1.2 uh, beta images came up today. So that is uh, another thing that might show off. But yeah, you can be on any version pretty much. You can be on 7.1.2, you can be on Marshmallow, and you can be on Nougat. So, uh, or a custom ROM even. I'll let you know what to do if you are on a custom ROM uh, after this. And also keep in mind that once you boot into Android O and you're not rooted, uh, obviously your root apps won't work and uh, that's a bit that's about it that's all you lose and also uh, one thing to mention is that this currently does not pass the CTS I forgot what that stands for something test suite uh, I think so things like Android pay won't work and yeah so I'll probably work it out in the beta of release of Android O but currently uh, Android pay will not work with this uh, which is fine so once you open the uh, system image here, we can open this folder and basically what we want to do is take out the radio image and you can see the bootloader is 03.64. That is the current one, at least if you flash the bootloader from the N4F26T build of Android, uh, then you won't need to update the bootloader. So I'm just going to extract the radio image, which is what we need to do. I'm going to open up the image-angler the zip file here. Uh, this might take a little while if your computer isn't the best in the world but it should only take a few seconds now this will get us access to some of the other files that we need such as the boot image the system image and vendor image so we'll need to download those as well and it shouldn't be it shouldn't take too long there we are we're finished and as you can see I just make this a little bit bigger uh, we see uh, these files that we need so obviously we're going to extract the the boot 
system and vendor. I guess you can extract all of them, but um, I'm pretty sure you just really need the boot system and vendor images. So I'm going to extract those three. Now the recovery, um, I currently have TWRP installed, so we might see that become overwritten with the stock recovery. But we won't need it anyways. I mean, you can flash the recovery image from this system image here if you like to, but uh, I think it's optional. Alrighty, so we have our images extracted, and that is pretty much all we'll need. So we can close these WinRAR windows, and you'll be left with four files pretty much. Now the system partition has grown to about three gigabytes, which is always nice, not really, but yeah. So that's one thing, and I guess I can. I guess we can have a quick look at what we have new in Android O as well, or I'll make a separate video on that. So now we're up to the flashing process. We want to go to our device pretty much. And if I just pull that up, you can see currently I am on 7.1.1. I have my app set up and all that, so hopefully we won't lose any of this. And But I'll be sure to let you know if I do end up losing any data. So I'm going to power off and I'm going to disconnect the USB cable just so um, we can reboot into the bootloader more in more of a, an easier fashion. So we'll let it turn off, let it take its time. As usual, I would recommend that you back up anything that you need off of your device. Things like TWRP backups or photos or music, pictures, things like that. Just in case uh, something does go wrong. Anyway, we'll be doing a factory reset in TWRP if needed anyways. So we're going to reboot into the bootloader. So you can do that by holding the power button and volume down buttons at the same time. Okay, so that is what it's supposed to look like. And from there, you can just leave it, plug it in now like so and back to our computer pretty much uh, what we we'll need to do here actually I'll bring up the fancy view what I'm gonna do is you're gonna have to bring up the way that you use fastboot so in this case if you followed one of my old videos or one of the videos I linked down below you'll be able to use this for ADB and fastboot in any command prop window that you like but uh, if you've set it up a different way just make sure you can use fastboot and these are the commands that you'll need to do so first off, we'll check that our device is actually in fastboot. So we can type in fastboot devices. And there we are, that's our serial number. Once that is done, we're going to flash the boot image. Actually, no, we'll flash the radio image. So I'm going to type in fastboot flash radio. I'll leave a space at the end of here and then drag in our radio image. Hit enter. And that shouldn't take too long. What we're going to do next is just reboot back into the bootloader something out of habit, but I don't think it's actually necessary. Then we'll type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader. You see our device pretty much uh, goes straight back into the bootloader. There we are. Once that is done, we'll do another fastboot devices, just to check that our device is back here, and it is. And then we are going to flash the boot image. So we'll type in fastboot flash boot, we'll leave a space in the end and drag in our boot image onto the command prop window hit enter. Next up we'll flash the system image, so we'll type in fastboot flash oops, system, leave the space on the end, drag in the system image and hit enter. And there we are, our last sparse image, and that took about two minutes, so 120 seconds. Last but not least we're going to flash the vendor image, so we'll type in fastboot flash vendor leave a space on the end, drag in the vendor image, and press enter. Now this part shouldn't take too long, or that long. And we're done. So right now, this is our fork in the road. If you are running a custom ROM, you would probably want to do a factory reset in TWRP. If you are coming off a pretty much the stock ROM, either Nougat or Marshmallow even, I think you can, you won't have to wipe any data. But if you are coming from a custom ROM, I would recommend that because when I tried going from Pure Nexus to Android O, it um, got stuck in a little, little boot loop, shall we say. So I would recommend that you wipe data and in TWRP. So you can just do that by booting into the recovery straight away from the bootloader without booting into Android first, so to speak, or trying to. And so 
From there you can just swipe to factory reset and that is what you want to do. So I'll just go demo that pretty quick just in case you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about. So I'll repeat once again. If you're from a stock ROM, 7.1, 7.1.2 or even 6.0.1 and you're on the stock ROM and you haven't really changed much I guess, shouldn't have. Uh, and so that means you can pretty much boot into Android so you can press select start and press the power button but if you're running a custom ROM and you've just flashed these images you want to go down and reboot into recovery mode so from there in the recovery mode you're going to do a factory reset now there's a little bit of a pain in the butt but I assure you that will probably be the best thing to do unless you want more bugs I guess so you should be able to boot into TWRP straight away. If it goes to a screen that says no command with a little Android guy in the middle, then you would just want to flash back or flash TWRP and then boot into it straight away. So from here we are going to, I guess, swipe to allow modifications, doesn't really matter. And what you want to do is tap on wipe and then just swipe to factory reset like that. And then once you're done with that, just reboot the system. Now that is only for people who are running a custom ROM. If you, if you weren't, then I think you should be fine like I am. So I haven't wiped because I'm coming from a stock ROM and hopefully this will boot up, I guess, quite easily. And then we'll see, I guess, some of the new things with the Android O. Now keep in mind, you still can't root this at this moment on the date of upload or at least on the 22nd to the methods I've tried. So I guess you don't need to go trying those but I'll let you know if there's any way to root Android O and I'm assuming that will probably come in the days later. So we'll, I'll keep my eyes peeled for that, but until then, we'll have to go rootless uh, for this moment. Okie dokie, so we just booted into Android. Pretty quick, you can see our wallpaper is still here and we are greeted with the Android beta program little dialog here. So there is our new O icon and if we unlock it might take a little while uh, after the first boot I didn't wipe the cache partition so that's why I booted up pretty quickly like that but if uh, things do happen to not work properly I oh, don't know we're... here we are it's just I guess a little laggy but here we go uh, we get a glimpse of kind of our new notification shade you can see things, I think um, more of the persistent notifications are actually hidden now instead of showing the full thing. And uh, we can see these little underlines on some of these options here. So that means you can actually expand into the full kind of menu. So remember when you tapped on the Wi-Fi icon, if it was expanded like this, you would kind of get this screen. And uh, so this is what you get when you tap on the little section below the line. But if you tap on the section above the line, it'll just go through a direct toggle to on and off, same with the mobile data switch and also same with the do not disturb I guess toggle, otherwise you can change settings in here, so that is a pretty neat way of doing so, same with bluetooth let's see what's on this side, hotspot, okay that is fine, so you can also see up here, this is a little bit different, a bit more crowded you now get to see the Wi-Fi icon, um, your signal and the battery and its percentage now if I just switch the views again so let's just have a quick look, you can see that the settings icon is now white for some reason. We have kind of a rearranged settings thing, so there's no more of that little drawer that slides out, which, uh, which I kind of like using. And there's also kind of some redundant menus, so if you go to security you can actually see that you can check out the security patch level and that is your check for updates page as well, because you can access that in system and then go into what do you call it, system updates, and it's the same thing. There's also a bit of kind of, it's hard to go to some menus, like the moves menu that was recently introduced uh, with the fingerprint gestures and all that. So now they're under languages and input and then advanced and then now they're moves. So swiping for notifications, they turn on. And there's a lot of white space and I could think, I guess some icons are missing. So right now if I kind of do this, it should bring down the notification shade. And if I swipe back up, it should do the same thing which is uh, pretty neat, now we have that. Let me just rotate this. So yeah, now one more quick thing I want to have a look at before I close this video is pretty much the 
system UI tuner and it has the revamped navigation bar tuner and of course the battery percentage is now if I just enable it now appears on the side which I like I didn't like it inside the battery icon because you really couldn't see it in some circumstances now here we can change the navigation bar uh, left and right things so that one is usually the one to change the keyboard change your keyboard input and that one you can set something on the left hand side so that could be your keyboard switcher key code or clipboard uh, which is very interesting the navigation bar also has a little, little change here we can get a compact settings just move the the back and the recents button closer together oops we can also change this to left leaning for you left handers out there and of course right leaning for us right handers uh, too bad there's no kind of like a little swipe thing to make it easier or more intuitive if you like to fumble between both of your hands at the same time but uh, I like this uh, these extra settings of course and the last thing I kind of want to show a second last thing is on the lock screen you can actually change the left and right shortcuts here so instead of having your voice or the camera here since we have the double press the power button to launch the camera app you can change the left shortcut to one of your apps or nothing and some activities as well from different apps so you can actually, or shortcuts I should say and this is derived from many launcher shortcuts that you might have so for example I can let's say let me um, I don't know, say I want to compose an email on the left hand side and say I want to open up a new incognito tab for whatever you like and so the left shortcut also unlocks and the right shortcut also unlocks so not too sure about that but I'm assuming that it'll unlock your device or it'll require an unlock so there we are we are composing a message and on the right you should open up a new incognito tab in Chrome eventually there we are so let's say if I turn off these two options and I lock it I'm not sure maybe that's because I don't have a lock screen on my phone currently uh, but yeah those are pretty interesting things to mess around with so I'm probably going to keep this I'll probably set this up a little bit later but that is something interesting to have a look at so I'll just keep these as none for now and another cool thing is with your notifications actually and there's also a couple of audio related changes to Bluetooth audio you can find that in the developer options and it is I think here you can change the Bluetooth audio codec for those people who like high fidelity music so one other thing with um, notifications you can actually snooze them now if you swipe over far enough you can tap on this little icon and it will come back in either 15 30 minutes or one hour or don't snooze it so that is also pretty cool and you can actually directly toggle whether this or this application should show notifications when you toggle like that and like that and you can also see down here we have it kind of um, gathering notifications that are pushed off the edge down here and uh, if I get more notifications or keep scrolling down uh, you'll end up seeing a lot of those little notification icons building up at the bottom uh, which is something pretty neat as well so I've actually almost gone over most of the features available in Android N I mean or O I guess the last thing to have a look at is that lovely Easter egg you still get the same feed your cat kind of mini game Easter egg so yeah that's the, the same but here we are this is our uh, Android O or at least the preview of it so that's pretty neat pretty interesting new settings um, thing so that's kind of weird but anyway that is Android O and that is how you flash that on a rooted device or a custom ROM and currently there is no root access uh, CTS won't pass so that means no Android Pay. I have yet to test out things like Snapchat or anything like that, but I, I'm assuming that Snapchat might work, but Android Pay won't. So yeah, a lot of different menus here as well. Uh, and I think that's pretty much about it. If I find any more things that are interesting, I'll probably make another video uh, going into a little bit more depth into all this. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll talk to you all in the next one.